Okay, so this is basically uh, the basic basics of how to do fine aliasing in typically in one D. And now let's talk a little bit about two D. Well, when you go beyond one D, how do you actually define the elements? Becomes uh, not there is no clear choice on how to define actually the elements. Uh, I would first tell you the most popular way, especially if you are looking at an irregular domain, is actually you use triangles. So if you have any irregular domain, uh, it's the easiest way to discretize it is a constructor triangular mesh. There has been like a lot of advancement in how to automatically mesh almost any domain, and. Uh, um, if you if you are if you have MATLAB, uh, you can try this PDE toolbox, and uh, well, you can you can define all kinds of boundaries. Uh, like uh, you can you can make a you can make an ellipse. You can on top of it uh, add something like this, and uh, well, you can boundary mode. You can just uh, oh, this is already the boundary, so it's, it doesn't matter. You can uh, you can mesh. Uh, you automatically get a triangular mesh, right? So, so this is a uh, uh, you can refine it. Uh, you can refine it. So, so this is basically uh, pretty much in a lot of tools. You can mesh arbitrary domains into triangles. So, uh, and how do you how do you uh, define the space finite dimensional space in a piecewise uh, triangular element. Is there a natural way to extend the piecewise linear functions into this triangular element space? Yeah. Hmm? Pyramid. Yeah, uh, pyramid. So we can still define piecewise linear functions, right? Because uh, um, it's it's okay for a function to be linear over here and uh, uh, still continuous across the domain boundaries right and uh, defining a nodal basis function is actually pretty easy so if I am uh, okay to draw contours then then let's see if well I think I missed the uh, this guy so if a basis function is piecewise linear, which means linear in every triangle, and takes a value of 1 here and value of 0 in all the other points. Then, of course, it's going to be 0 in this element, 0, 0, 0 in these elements, right? Because all the three um, vertices are 0, so the function being linear can only be entirely 0 within these domains. But like it's different within the domains, the, the elements surrounding this uh, uh, a single vert vertex. If, it, if I draw the contour, the contour would be like this. It's going to be parallel to the line on which it is zero. And uh, it basically looks like a pyramid. So this would be the contour of one of these basis functions. right? Right? Okay? And uh, you can have another basis function that is uh, centered around here, and the contours would be something like this. Yeah, I don't have to do all of these, but like it's, it's basically going to be uh, linear functions in, and, and also continuous across the domain boundaries. And you can imagine I have, uh, on every node, I have a basis function. So here, let's uh, imagine the way we constructed the finite element matrix. Let's focus on one of these elements. For example, focus on this one. How many basis functions, how many non-zero basis functions do we have within that element? Or how big is the element matrix? Nine? Why nine? Yeah, there are actually three basis functions in which the function is non-zero within that element, right? 
So, so one is here, one is here, one is here. A triangle has three vertices. So, three elements, and it's a three by three element matrix. And the task of uh, constructing the big fine element matrix is to figure out how which row and which column, which corresponding, which are the rows corresponding to this vertex, this vertex, this vertex. And I'm going to insert the rows and the columns of this three by three matrix into the big matrix. And I loop over all these elements and uh, add the corresponding entries of the element matrix, and I have the big fine element matrix. All right, so that's one of the ways to do it. Another popular way to uh, discrete as a two-dimensional space is what we are going to encounter in our project. Is I have rectangles instead of uh, triangles. So here, can I still define a piecewise linear function? <coughs> I can, but like uh, then it is not clear how to construct a nodal basis anymore. Okay, because it, what if I want this node to be one and all the rest to be zero? Is there a piecewise linear function that can accomplish this? No, right? Because uh, the 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 uh, if I have a linear function in this. Uh, in this uh, uh, square, in this triangle, uh, in this rectangle, then these three numbers is going to already determine the contours of this, and then the value of this has to be minus one as opposed to be zero, right? So uh, there doesn't exist a piecewise lin linear function that allows me to construct a nodal basis. So because of the convenience of the nodal basis. We usually adopt a piecewise bilinear function. A piecewise bilinear function means it is linear in this direction, it is also linear in this direction, but I would allow a cross term, or x times y term. A piecewise bilinear function is, uh, well, a piecewise linear function is only going to be like uh, a plus bx plus cy, so that's a uh, linear. A piecewise bilinear allows additional term d times x times y. So that this is linear in x, also linear in y, but not linear in the uh, combination of x and y. Okay, so so this is uh, uh, what makes uh, it possible to define a piece uh, define a nodal basis for uh, rectangular elements. All right, so. Uh, 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 of course, uh, tricks like this is just uh, going more and more uh, as you go to three dimensions. And uh, the most uh, general and complicated uh, funny elements are in three dimensions, but not discretizing three-dimensional domains. So things like shells, uh, uh, a lot of the st structural calculations involves uh, thin structures, right? For example, if you want to to find elements of how uh, your cloth would behave. It, it's uh, it's uh, actually a lot more efficient to discretize uh, uh, thinking about your cloth as a, a two-dimensional two -dimensional geometry living in a three-dimensional domain. Also in aerospace industry, a lot of, because airplanes have to be light, a lot of the structures are very thin uh, shells. So, so the, then um, that's, that there is a lot of complexity in all of these uh, curved uh, elements that are 2D but lives in a three-dimensional space. Okay, so, so basically over there, uh, you still want nodal basis, and uh, how do you construct uh, the space of the functions to allow nodal basis, allow continuity across elements, is uh, basically uh, going into the more complex part of finite elements, okay? But here, um, this is the two most popular ways of doing finite elements in, in two spatial dimensions. 